Hey y'all, how are you guys doing? I was leaning, <laughs> we're here. We got freaking here, come on into the classroom. Come on in into the classroom. We got it all fixed. Brittany and I did a little technical test in the background. It worked perfect. And now we're here, listen guys. I am Oliver Twix, your nerd boy cutie reporting for duty here to do the Lord's work. What? Again! Here talking to Brittany from Cycle 8 of America's Next Top Model, the iconic Brittany from America's Next Top Model, Cycle 8. She's in the back. She's waiting to join. She's so excited to talk to me and all of you about the GM, a and GM. But before we do that, we have a couple of classroom announcements to go through. I'm so sorry if you just heard these announcements on the Instagram. Since we're doing it live on YouTube, I have to say it all over again because what I'm not doing is doing this live, downloading, adding it, exporting up. All right. Remember to share our ANTM to exclusive videos on all of your social media. That's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Reddit. Shout out to the Reddit girls. Thank you so much for supporting Oliver Twix and all of these lives. Share the madness with a friend. Let's grow it, guys. Again, I want to give my sincere condolences about the Giselle video. As you guys know, I am now an Instagram creator off the strength of these Antium lives. And with that being said, I fall under a new set of rules where even the slightest thing can result in a penalty. And because our guest said a word, it's not her fault because she didn't know, because I didn't know, because you don't know these things until it happens. Anyways, that word got the live. Deleted from Instagram, I have sent in an appeal. We're crossing our fingers, pinky toes, and foreheads, but let's just go with it's dead in the grave, which is what brings you to the next thing. Why I brought on Joanna and Shani to the Cycle 2 live I did with Mercedes in April the other day. As a lot, guys, please forgive me for this mishap <laughs> and trying to fix one mishap. I almost caused a new just know that all of us are laughing. All the ladies are laughing. They're cool. I do know that. Yoana is, in fact, going on Throwback Thursday, the podcast, with the other two ladies to talk about Top Model and that little moment. But we're all laughing. It's all funny, guys. Just laugh, 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 laugh. It happens. It freaking happens. All right. Be sure to catch the T.S. Madison Experience debuting on WeTV here in the U.S. I'm not sure if it streams worldwide. I'm not sure. But in the U.S., it's going to premiere on WeTV on March 4th at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, featuring pop culture icon T.S. Madison and reality TV star legend Tiffany New York Pollard, and of course, the head nerd in charge, me! Tune in and let me know what you think. If you want to get a little bit more of Oliver Twix, you can go binge watch Chasing Atlanta seasons three and four on Chasing Reality, exclusively found on YouTube. Zap the Mixtape is streaming on all music digital platforms. Thank you guys so much for your support. Mm, and, oh, shout out to Youth to Leaders, which is a nonprofit program that I'm currently supporting. You can find their information on my Instagram channel, Instagram page, whatever, at he is Oliver Twixt. Um, read the message. If it talks to you, speaks to you, please support them because it would be so appreciated. And if you want to promote with the nerd, feel free to email me. Com no, don't comment me, because I don't read the comments. Email me or DM me, and we can go ahead and get you here to our massive audience. We have accumulated. All right. On to the good stuff! Y'all, it's been a long night. Tyra, we bind you. Wait, before let me set the foundation. Tyra, we bind you, girl. We bind you, we bind you from doing harm, harm to yourself, harm to others, and our Wi-Fi. Give us a clean, uninterrupted live chat with the girl. It's Valentine's Day. Show some love. And with that being said, guys, I'm going to bring on Brittany from Cycle 8 of America's Next Top Model. Bam! Hello. Hi! How are you? I am great. How are you? I'm good. On behalf of the technology and Wi-Fi gods and spirits out there, I give you my sincerest apologies. We did not oh. foresee this happening. It's all right. Things happen. But I'm so glad we were able to fix it. And thank you so much for being patient and um, easy to work with, with the full snafu. Of course. <laughs> So, Brittany, I'm so excited to bring you on and talk to you about America's Next Top Model, 
Cycle 8, which a little bit of trivia for you girls out there. Cycle 8 was the first cycle I did that kicked off this series I've been doing. And it, it was with Dion. Really? You remember Dion? I do. Yes, Dion was my first girl I talked to. And Cycle 8 was the first cycle I talked about. And I think she is still the only girl I've talked to until now from Cycle 8. Well, exciting. It couldn't get any better. So how do you feel about revisiting all of this like top model ish kebab, ish kebab so many years later? It's become popular recently. Yeah, it's a little strange. Um, there was a period, I mean, there's always a period where they like re-air it mm -hmm. and I'll get like random text messages from my friends where they're like, oh, you're in my living room on my TV again. And I'm mm -hmm. like, they're playing that again? Really? Mm -hmm. So that's a little strange. Um, yeah, I haven't thought about it in a long time. If you can give like three words to describe how you view your top model experience now, looking back on it, what would you say? Um, summer camp, goofy, and very young. Okay, that's really nice words. Okay, that's good. Listen, I'm just going to jump into it. I pull questions from the comment sections of both my YouTube channel and my Instagram from the fans wanting to know the things. So if you don't like the question, don't be mad at me. Be mad at them. It's all right. <laughs> okay. Well, with that being said, I want to know, Brittany, what made you audition for America's Next Top Model? Um, I had a friend that uh, told me, kept, I constantly was asked if I was a model. Um, mm -hmm. And she, I'd grown up with her and she was like, you have to go try out for this. And if you go try out for it, I will never, ever, ever, ever bother you about modeling again. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, sure, why not? So I went and I did the casting and then I got a call and they were like, do you want to come to LA? So I did. Okay, okay. So when you got there, how was it seeing the whole environment of filming a reality TV show? Like we just see models and smiling girls and judges, but on your end, it's the cast, it's the talent, mm -hmm. the judges, it's the producers, it's the lights, it's the room, it's the chords. How was it seeing all that? Um, definitely a little intense. Mm -hmm. um, it took some getting used to. I remember, I think production's uh, phrase during casting was fake it to make it. So act excited. You know, we're filming reality here. Right. Pump it up, get involved. If you want to be on the show, you're going to have to act excited. So with you getting that um bite, like they like to say in reality TV, here's a little bite for you for you know for you to um for you to act out and scene. How did that influence you walking into the judges' room and you seeing Tyra, Mr. J, Miss J for the first time? Um, I think I was nervous, uh, a little not sure like what to do. Mm -hmm. I bet. Um, I'm naturally a shy person. I think I spent the first like ten years of my life behind my mother's skirt, just hiding. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Didn't talk to anybody, so it definitely made me have to like confront that. Um, I was terrified, probably. <laughs> I bet. But even with you being like afraid, did you have any ounce of confidence that you would actually get into the house? Because you did get into the house, but did you believe I you did. Get into the house? Um, I mean, I guess so. I just kind of tend to take things as they go. Mm -hmm. um, I figured I was there. Why not try? <laughs> If you could slap one thing on the board that you remember from um, casting week, what would it be? Um, it would probably be all the waiting. Ooh. Whenever cameras aren't rolling, when you're How sitting in those that? rooms, just like waiting, when there's no cameras on you and you're just sitting there and you have to be quiet mm -hmm. on ice, quote unquote. You guys right. are on ice, nobody's rolling. Um, and trying to be patient through that, mm -hmm. which is, I think, you know, the buildup of they want you a little bit anxious, so. Mm -hmm. If you could give us like an estimated time of the longest amount of time you had to wait, what would it be? Oh God, there were definitely times that it was like a few hours. Yikes. Do they give you guys like crackers and like drinks? Oh yeah, they, they gave us snacks. And then even on the show, like when we, when you weren't rolling, we were on ice, like mm -hmm. waiting in the limo. I'm now, limos weird me out because they just have like flashbacks to top model and just sitting in a limo. 
waiting, not allowed to talk. And you have to have like a babysitter to go to the bathroom. Makes you feel like you're seven. Your Wranglers. Mm-hmm. Yikes. Slight P, slight, ooh, I, almost, I messed that word up. Slight PTSD, these juicy lips in the way. <laughs> PTSD with, with moles and top model. A little bit. Mm. Okay, well, I'm going to go into the next segment that we do over here. It's called a and Roll Call. And I'm going to say the name of every girl who was a cast member on your cycle. And you're going to tell me the first thing, it could be a couple of words that comes to your head, good, bad, ugly, or indifferent. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. Okay, so the first girl going in the order of elimination is Kathleen. Um, sweet and goofy. Have you seen her Instagram? Like I in twenty twenty one, Kathleen is a hot mama. I mean, she was gorgeous. She's a hot mama. She's hot. She's popping. Yeah, Shout I mean, she was gorgeous on the show. She was a little spacey, but also she was a little younger than the rest of us. So. Did you foresee her going home first? I didn't. I was surprised at that. Who you thought was going home first? I wasn't really sure, honestly. Mm hmm Now, guys, I think because we don't talk about Cycle 8 enough, I don't give it its praises, but Cycle 8 overall had some very cool photo shoots, even with the whole um, political photo shoot that you guys know. Yeah, political issues photo shoot that you guys did in in, in um, episode one, which was anti or pro. How was that experience like for you shooting with Nigel Barker on episode week one of Top Model? Um, it was a little intimidating. It was definitely mm -hmm. fun. Uh, I think I did better than I thought I would. Mm -hmm. um, not really sure what else to say about it. It was just strange and odd. And at the same time, they had had uh, there was like a a uh, writer strike in Hollywood. Mm. So going to that shoot, we like had to black out our windows because somebody had like tipped off whoever who we were, and we were driving all over the place with like newspapers over the windows to make sure that we didn't get leaked about who was on the show because they film in advance, obviously. Right. So it was all a little strange. <laughs> no, I bet, I bet. The second girl out was Samantha. First thing that comes to your mind. I adore her. She's mm -hmm. so sweet. She was just very charming and adorable. Mm hmm Okay. Cassandra, the sweet, sweet Cassandra. Um quirky. Mm hmm She was definitely quirky. She was quieter, I think, than the rest of us. Mm -hmm. Um, but sweet. Felicia? Felicia, I adored Felicia. She had a very fun and outgoing personality. Did you um, think that Felicia would go further than when she was eliminated? It was just shock to me to see her eliminated so early. Yeah, I definitely thought that she would. I thought that she would go a lot further. Um, I wasn't sure if it was like her likeness to Tyra that maybe got her eliminated. You think so? Possibly. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Felicia. Sorry, mom and dad. Oh, what about Diana? Um, Diana was very intelligent. Mm -hmm. She was very, very smart. Um, very rational, logical. Little bit. Mm, what's the word I want? Pretentious at times. Okay. Okay. Uh, what about Sarah? Um, Sarah is one of my favorite people in the world. Mm -hmm. I love her to pieces. Mm -hmm. um, she's actually a lot like me. Like we have very similar ADD personalities. Mm -hmm. um, creative would be the word. Okay. So does that mean you guys still talk to this day? We do all the time. Oh, amazing. Okay. I just talked to her like last week. Shout out to Sarah. Sarah, girl, hit me up. Um, what about Whitney? Whitney would, I would say, very rational and level-headed. Okay. Um, the next person up in our list is the beautiful soul, J.L. Strauss. You're going to make me cry. No, don't cry. I don't actually cry all that much. Um, one of my favorite people in the entire world and one of my best friends. Oh. 
really sad that she's passed. Uh, free spirit and bright light. Mm -hmm. For the people out there, um, of course, we all saw Jail's story, you know, as it played out on things like Dr. Phil. But I was so happy as a fan of Top Model and as a fan of Jail, I thought Jail was one of the shining stars of Sackle It was so happy that, you know, before she transitioned onto the next world, she found peace. She got herself together. She was, she was, she was living life. She was happy. Um, and she had healed herself. Were you still friends with JL um, towards the latter part of her life? I was. Um, she oh, actually she met my daughter. She came and visited me in um, Georgia uh, right after my daughter was born. And then I had done a book tour with the children's book that I had written. Um, and I stayed with her um, in uh, Texas where she was working as a counselor at a rehab center. Mm -hmm. um, trying to help people go through what she went through. Um, always the helper, bright light. Uh -huh. And I actually, um, in her tribute, I'm working on another children's book. Um, oh, beautiful. Called Rights to Remember Regardless of Gender. And there's a narrator in it. Um, give me two seconds, actually. Oh, uh -huh, no, take your time, take your time. So the illustrator had wanted to illustrate me into the book. And I was like, you know what? I would really like, because I think this is a message that she would like, to use my friend JL as like a, in her memory. And I reached out to her mom and made sure that that was okay. And her mom said, absolutely. And the book will be out in like the next few months. And this is. Oh my goodness. And Mark that's JL standing on top holding the sign. Uh-huh. Cause she was definitely an activist and believed in equality and everyone's Oh, wow. That is, Brittany, shout out to you. That is so amazing. Um, Can you tell us how we can support this book when it comes out? Um, I mean, you could buy a copy. We're planning on when we uh, get ready to release it, doing a Kickstarter to like sort of pre-sell the book. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll definitely post. I'll send you a copy. Oh, that um, would be, oh, I would love that. And the idea is to teach children about body autonomy and consent for little girls. Um, so, and I really felt that that was something that she would be impassioned about. She was always such an activist and such like a positive force in anything like that. So she felt great for the narrator character. I just want to say on behalf of everybody, thank you so much for sharing your feelings and, and, and what you're doing and, like about JL, you know, there's not a lot of things about the latter part of her because you know she wasn't as in the limelight as she wasn't so thank you for giving us a little bit more insight i have one more question about it you having a relationship with her what is what are a couple of things if not just one thing that you think that she would like for us to know right now about her um that she genuinely loved everyone i i think my favorite phrase of hers was always oh, it's the best day ever, or this is the best person ever, or this is my best friend ever. And she genuinely meant it every single time. Like, it didn't matter if something else was the best five minutes before that, she was 100% always all the way in and the kindest, sweetest, most giving human being. I'm sending you a big virtual hug right now. Thank you so much for, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I know I'm looking at every, everybody's enjoying it in there. Thank you so much for um, being vulnerable and sharing that with us. And guys, I'm going to post the link when the book comes out so we can support this. Um, Cause I think it's just so beautiful to see her immortalized in that way. It's so beautiful. Yeah, I That's wanted beautiful. something in her tribute. It's beautiful. Um, On to the next girl is Miss Dion. <laughs> Miss Dion. Dion. Dion had a fun attitude. Like she was very powerful, I think would be the word. She was very outspoken, very, but not in like a mean way, like mm -hmm. just very direct. Okay. Have Which you I think women could be a little more of sometimes. So Okay. Shout out to Dion for being a for being a strong woman. Did you watch the live I did with Dion? I didn't. I saw a few minutes of it. Mm -hmm. um, and then my four-year-old was climbing in my lap asking for princess paint videos. So I had to give my computer over. 
it feels so long ago. You know, I don't remember anything from my live. It was the first live I ever did, which was like in the thick of the quarantine um, with all this mess going on here. And I'm like pulling at straws trying to remember what was said during the chat. But just go check it out, guys. If you haven't watched it, I talked to Dion many, 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 many months ago about Cycle 8. It is a good watch. It's our first watch. So go check it out. Um, What about Renee? Renee Alway. Oh, boy. Um, I think that she wanted to be the bitch more than she was. Okay. Um, I remember her saying during casting week, like, oh, I'm the bitch of the season. Mm -hmm. Um, she, so I think she sort of like put that into a lot of who she was on the show. Mm -hmm. Um, I know she's been dealing with some stuff after the show. Mm -hmm. Um, I know her and JL had stayed in contact. Mm -hmm. Um, cause JL's JL and loves everyone. Um, the only time I talked to her after the show was recently when she, like briefly, not recently, but briefly when she called me to do, um, ask for any insight on an acting thing because she had a random acting thing, but she was she was kind of a mess. Yikes. I know, and it's, it's so crazy. Um, I get a lot of like fan mail from different people from around the world. And I recently read one today from a professor who um, was um, thanking me, and I'm so honored, you know, for her to, to even write this to me, but she was saying how these chats and talking to you girls who participated in this reality TV show is really building a case study almost about how people are affected by the industry of reality TV. And in relation to Renee, a lot of things that played out later on in her life that we saw that, you know, wasn't so amazing. You, One can't say you see a lot of this um, or indicators when she was in the house, you know, and how she would react and stuff mm -hmm. like that. How was it for you filming with her at, at her genesis in entertainment and then seeing what happened later? Um, a little shocking. Um, also on the other side of that, like saying how the reality show causes things to play out. I also think they're casting a certain type of personality. Um, mm -hmm. We do go through questions with random psychiatrists during casting week where they sort of give us questionnaires and we're filling things out and talking to these different people. And I think mm -hmm. they're just sort of trying to pinpoint, yeah, pinpoint certain personality types that are a bit more extreme. Of course. So they might be more already in line with something like that in their life. Mm -hmm. um, and then obviously the upheaval of fame and then the struggle afterward because it's reality television it's not like a job basically person that can always be built on uh, especially if you don't know how mm -hmm. um and that's going to detriment people and cause a lot of pain and an instability between the two that they're trying to navigate and i think that that's what's happened with her um I, I I can't agree with that outlook. I have a fan question here. This is from Holiday197 asking, what are your thoughts on Renee's edit and, um, and how they changed throughout the season? She started off the season being the major villain who seemed to get on every offside, um, to get every offside with her. And then midway after Tyra's conversation with you guys, when she did that little intervention, her edit changed to being someone who was likable. Was she really as disliked in the house as what was shown in the first half of the season? I don't think that she was that disliked in the house as what was shown in the first half. Half, I think that when they can film you 24 hours a day, seven days a week, okay. um, that and they cut you down into a five minute clip mm -hmm. for a episode, they're gonna be able to make you look however you want. You know, I'm, um, my friends here know that I've been talking about this show that I'm part of that's um, debuting on WeTV. This is T.S. Madison Experience. And, you know, not to give it all away, and of course I'm happy with my bosses over there at WOW, World of Wonder, and WeTV, but in just doing some of my interviews, I can see where it may not be explicitly said, but mm -hmm. I can see where people who are doing the story editing can say, okay, this is the person I go to to make a file. This is the person that I go to, this is the person I can, I, I, I can go to for that. So you're saying that there were other parts of Renee's personality, but we just saw just one aspect Absolutely. of it. 
Okay. Absolutely, because they're they have every season they have the same like cutout. They have the mean girl. Yes. They have this. They have that. They have this. They have that. And they're just editing that way. And that's where your script writers come in, and they're taking what's happened and making it fit into a thing. I mean, there are definitely times where I'd be watching the show and I'd be like, wait a minute, I didn't say that then. And you hear like, you can kind of hear the room tone change. Mm -hmm. And it's oh, also yes. why you're saying everything in uh, first person and immediately as if it's happening right now, mm -hmm. because they like to cut together their clips. And you know, the crazy thing is guys, you've heard a lot of girls come in here and saying, I'm saying it. The crazy thing is, when you participate in these reality TV shows, there's like a little clause where you sign and you agree, you can do whatever that you want to do with this and present it in whatever manner that you want to. And the only thing is you better hope and pray they present it in a way that's favorable in your in your, in your success. Because you you, you you sign your rights away. You, you sign it away. You tell them to do it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, sorry. The next girl is Natasha. Natasha, Natasha, Natasha. Natasha was really fun and silly. Um, interesting, I would say, would be what comes to mind for her. Mm -hmm. I think she, the language barrier was sometimes interesting, and I think that she was one of the more uh, driven out of the group that, like, really 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 wanted it mm -hmm. um so passionate would be a good word now we don't have to get into it right now in this moment because we have a little bit more time um to go throughout the cycle but did you think natasha asking you <laughs> down to priscilla's <laughs> Did you know that this war in other countries would be so iconic still to this day? At the time, I think I was a little caught up in the moment, but I honestly now I think it's hilarious. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's a pretty good response to someone that's having a meltdown. <laughs> like seriously, check yourself and get yourself together. <laughs> basically, that's basically, basically what she was saying. Have yeah. you seen some of like the modern day conversations about that moment on how like you went on like this whole explosive rant and then she's like in her voice and her like, do you know that there's war in other countries? She's like, that is like the perfect response. Like it that, is. Who could be bad? Exactly. Have you spoken to Natasha recently? I have not. I have not spoken to her, I think, since the show. Oh. Now, have you seen Natasha's Instagram? I have not. Her Instagram is, I was like, is this, I mean, I can tell it's Natasha, but she's like bomb, like bomb, bomb, explosive shell now. And she's, I don't, I want to know what, I want to know what she puts as her occupation on her taxes. I'm curious. <laughs> I'm very, I'm curious. Now I want to look at her Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just curious. I just want to know. I'm curious. Oh, moving on to the last girl, last but not least, the winner of Cycle 8, Jasmine. Um, Cha-Cha Diva. Of course. Uh, very, a little stubborn, mm -hmm. very fierce, um, definitely a little bit wild. Mm-hmm. Now, were you aware of her story that started the cycle before with her being, uh, um, I guess they would consider a semi-finalist, um, being in a part of the girls who almost got into the house but didn't? Were you aware of that story um, when you were filming? Of course, as time went on, of course they knew about it. But like when you first got into... Yeah, um, when we first got in, no. I wasn't aware of that initially. So once you did find out about it, did you feel, because there are a lot of fans who think that she was a pre-select. There's a whole bunch of pre-select theories out there in Top Model Universe. Once you did find out about that, and of course, one can only imagine the arc of her being like this dark horse that goes on and when, did you think maybe there was a little bit of mischievous play at hand with the producers? Like, we're going to put her in here since we didn't choose her, and we're going to have her win. Yeah, I mean, I think they had everything a lot more planned out than we are aware of. Mm -hmm. um, I think that that's sort of a given if you look at their myth 
their methodicalness and how they have one type of girl win and then another girl, another girl, another girl. And it's, it, they kind of edit it the same way throughout it and you can kind of pinpoint it as you go. Mm -hmm. So are there any other moments where you experience this methodical planning from the hands of the producers while filming Cycle 8? Um, I was the only person that on our go sees had one of the directors of the show going around with the cameraman with them, which I thought was a little weird. Um, in retrospect, at the time, I didn't really think it was weird. I was kind of caught up in the moment and sleep deprived. They really, really, really like to sleep deprive us. <laughs> Creates for better TV. Of course. Hungry and sleepy. Mm hmm Emotionally on edge. Yes, yes. In a whole other country, this young girl with no conversation or connection to her former life being thrusted out here with a camera on her face and saying, make it work and make it look fierce. Mm -hmm. Yikes. So you said that there was a director going around with you during your ghost years. Yes. Do you believe this played into something else later? Um, I think that it probably had more to do with like what was going on at the go sees um, because they were talking to the people first and vice versa, but who knows? Okay, all right. Well, that is the end of ANTM Roll Call for Cycle 8 with this Brittany, guys. You did a great job, Brittany. Well, thank you. Now, a lot of people want to know, I just said Brittany, but of course, right now we see Corinne and on your social media, it says Corinne. Did mm -hmm. you go through a name change? Um, well, Corinne is my middle name. Okay. And after the show, I had signed with New York Model Management. Mm -hmm. um, and reality TV is not very good for modeling, <laughs> first off. You've heard. Um, and secondly, Brittany is a very common name. Okay. Um, so Corinne was the better choice of the names that I was given. Though my mother hates that I go by Corinne now. She's like, <laughs> you changed your name. And I'm like, no, it's it's one of the names you gave me. Like It's, it's right there on my birth certificate. It's just the second one. <laughs> Right, right. And so with you changing your name, did it like help you stay away from the top model little 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 nasty glow? Or did you still have moments where like you're Britney? I think a little bit. I had some people like casting directors after the fact be like, I thought that was you, because obviously mm -hmm. I'm not gonna like lie about it. But mm -hmm. they'd be like, Yeah, I, did. I wasn't sure though, like with uh -huh. this and when people would ask, I'd just be like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Mm. Um, so yeah, and I I feel like Corinne suits me better. Um, I've never really felt like a Britney. Mm -hmm. Or Brit with two T's. One T. One well, T. It has two T's, <laughs> but I hate that when you shorten it, there's two T's because you don't say Brits. That, that's what I was trying to get you to say. That's what I was trying to get you to say. I remember that from that episode. And I was like, why did... She could have just left it at Britney, or it would have been sickening for you to go by Corinne. That would have been, <laughs> yeah. We were we had limited time to choose. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna keep going on with these fan questions. Mm -hmm. Kai Ann ninety nine is asking, did you actually get to take home the golden shoe trophy for winning that high school prom runway challenge? If so, do you still have it? I don't still have it. I did get to take it home. Um, I ended up actually leaving it in LA with JL <laughs> and then I never got it back. Um, when we'd flown back from Australia, uh, I just kind of like skipped my second flight <laughs> and just stayed in LA for like a month hanging out with her um, before heading home and it ended up there. Okay. Gabrielle Santa, Santa Bria wants to know, how terrible was your hair situation? A lot of questions about your hair, your scalp, the bleaching. Tell us what happened to you. It was awful. Mm -hmm. um, they had dyed my hair multiple times first before the dyeing it red, like bleached it out and my hair had scabbed up underneath. Um, so when they um, stitched the weave in, which why would they ever do that? Those things are only supposed to be in for like two weeks mm -hmm. at most. Um, it had pulled because they did the braids underneath. It had ripped the scabs open. So I had open sores on my head underneath. 
And when did you go tell producers like, hey y'all, I think something is going wrong with me. Can I get some help? I mean, I said things to them multiple times before that. Um, obviously not directly to Tyra. I know that she made a comment about that, but we never saw her unless cameras were rolling. So not really sure when they wanted me to do anything about this. Like there was a wall between us and production. And I, every time I was in a makeup artist chair or hair chair, I was trying to tell them, so. How long did it take for them to fix it? Um, couple weeks. Yikes. And in the meantime of them fixing it, what were you experiencing with your hair and the things of the thing? Um, I mean, it was the scabs kept ripping out, so it was bleeding underneath. It was excruciatingly painful. Yikes. So when did you start your hair recovery process? Was it during your time on Top Model or was it once you left, you were able to like, all right, I can do this to fix me up? Because your hair is well, beautiful right now. It's uh, freaking amazing. Well, once they took the weave out, it started to heal. So it was fine. I mean, you rocked it for a long time. You were a good sport about it. Tried. Yes, yes. And they, and, and they call you the crybaby. I know. <laughs> I don't actually cry that much in real life. <laughs> uh, Holiday197 also wants to know, do you have any behind the scenes tea regarding the party challenge at the mansion, especially when 50 Cent pushed JL in the pool? Okay. Ooh. So when 50 Cent threw JL in the pool, mm -hmm. he kept, there was like this whole little banter thing that was going on between them. Uh -huh. First off, he's a little rude because the first thing he said to me, like we were sitting there um, and I was talking to, I don't know, his producer or something like that. And he like taps me on the shoulder and he's like, he's trying to say something to you. And I turn around and he's like, he wants to know if the carpet matches the drapes because of the red hair. And I was like, okay, and I'm gonna get up now. So I got up and walked away and the whole night with JL, he's like, come here, come here. And then she'd go over to him and he'd go, go away. So Wait, Wait, we've never heard this before, Brittany. You just excited. How many people are watching us? 677 people are watching us, 78 including me. We have never heard this version of the story. So listen, 50 Cent, I don't want no smoke with you. I know you a queen that reads. I'm not trying to combat you. I'm just trying to get the story so people can know. Mm -hmm. So you are telling me that 50 Cent was baiting JL during mm. that oh, party. Yeah. Oh, I think they, I mean, everybody was sort of like being goofy and messing around and whatever, but she, they kept doing that. And then finally, um, she dumped water over his head because she got annoyed. She was like, really? And he picked her up and he threw her in the pool. Okay. Because of course you've seen the show, right? You watch on the show. It made it seem like JL was terrorizing that man. And he oh no, she was. Up with her and was like, Drown! Get baptized! Get some Jesus in you! Leave me alone! So you're saying that's not what happened? No. There was definitely like a back and forth that was going on between them. I really liked when she told him that she was bluish, though. <laughs> I'm trying to get my charger, guys, so my computer doesn't die. That... And, and, and he also... he uh, I'm looking at some of the comments about many, 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 man. Um, and he also said, did the curtain match the drapes to you? Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, 50, I don't want no problems with you. Leave me alone. <laughs> Leave me out of it. But just know I'm, I'm going to put your name in the title of this video, but I don't got no smoke with you. Leave me alone. You know, 50 Cent will rain down on the girl, something vicious. I don't, mm -mm. But thank you so much for telling us that story. That flushes it out in a whole other direction. I wasn't even expecting for it to go. Well, she said, like, I remember she went up to him and she was, um, he said something to her and she, he said, I've been shot nine times. And she was like, oh yeah, well I'm black and I'm Jewish and that makes me bluish. So let me do it and I'll do it right. And he, <laughs> <laughs> That's JL. <laughs> JL told that man that with full confidence. Oh yeah. <laughs> to be a fly on the camera. <laughs> You know what? I always thought JL was so funny. One of the funniest 
reality TV arguments I think that ever exists in life is when JL and that Renee got into it. And JL was like, everyone thinks you're a hot mess. Everyone, JL was getting in Renee's ass like like a black girl. Since she said she like she was getting her heart something. I was like, JL is a reader. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. <laughs> Um, TV Casey wants to know, does she? Okay, no, no, no. Yes. Does she have any tea on that awful expression slash emotions photo shoot or whatever the hell they called it? It seemed particularly low budget compared to literally everything else in that season. This is when Tyra made y'all change y'all names as well as you guys had that four oh, yeah. photo personality thing. What were your thoughts on that? Um... I don't know, maybe they were running out of ideas. Mm. Um, okay. JL's actually the one that picked the uh, secret evil for my one. <laughs> Cause she was like, I know you have it in there. Um, yeah, I think that maybe they were just running out of ideas or maybe they just, I mean, they gotta come up with a million photo shoots, why not? <laughs> J. Baldwin wants to know, how was it doing a photo shoot with the Babin twins from Cycle 7? Remember that trio photo you guys did when they had like ANTM alumni from Future's Days Past come back? How was that shooting with those two girls? Um, I don't really remember it. Oh, mm -hmm. Um, I think it was fine. I mean, I don't, there was nothing specifically that stands out to me about it. <laughs> It's okay. Well, just know, do you remember the judges loved the photo? They thought it was amazing. Well, I think, honestly, they probably had a lot better photos from every single person every single time, but that's why we weren't allowed to see her, the photos, except for the one time that Sarah won that challenge where she was allowed to, like, see her shots. Mm -hmm. So do you believe that certain photos were chosen at certain times, like the girls' best photos were ignored. Oh yeah, based on who they wanted to eliminate. When did you see this at play? I just think it's common sense. No, no, no I got you. But like, okay, so if you, if you could select an elimination during a cycle that you saw, where you was like, that girl's best photo was not chosen because they wanted to eliminate her, who would you say? Um. I would say, I know that my photo, I know I definitely had a better photo of the ones that Tyra took. Um, I would definitely say that there were a few of Sarah and I think the one of Samantha. I think she definitely had better pictures than that. Do you remember Felicia's performance at the death photo shoot? I honestly don't. I, what I remember most from the death photo shoot was um, JL at her having to go be put through. And I seriously think that they did this intentionally to cause drama um, being put through that photo shoot right after she found out about a friend passing. There were a lot of questions about that and, and, and I didn't include it, but since you said it, to clarify, you do believe that that was something intentional the producers did. Oh, yeah. I think that they completely staged it and set it up for that. What makes you think that? Because it's reality television. Okay. Hey. Okay. We, okay. Singing with KB wants to know, how come you said that you have a good memory when it came to the acting challenge, but for the Color Girl commercial, you gave your story about having short-term memory loss. Okay. Was that no, you go ahead. Do. Okay. So first off, working memory and perm and like long-term memory are different. Working memory is a three to five second recall. We had the scripts for the acting challenge, whereas the CoverGirl commercial was cue cards. Mm -hmm. So when you're looking at a cue card and then you're trying to remember it, it's your working, it's your short-term working memory. I was hit by a car when I was 17. Uh, I was hit by a Jeep doing 50 that tried to beat a red light. I had five pelvic fractures. I had eight staples in my head. My ACL was torn. I was in a wheelchair um, for I think like four or five months. Um, I had to have a cesarean section when I had my daughter because of the pelvic fractures. I had eight staples in my head. And a year later when they tested me, they said, here's our issue. You're a very hard girl to analyze. You have 
a scale right here. And intelligence wise, you're here. However, short term memory wise, you're down here. So, I mean, my four year old calls me a spaz regularly. And she's like, mommy, it's a good thing you have me to find your keys because you have a broken brain. And I'm like, yeah, I know. So I lose my keys daily. I forget. I lose my phone. I've gone through like five phones easily in a year um, just from leaving them places. Um, my mother now knows to leave notes on the door for me so that I remember things. I also have ADHD. So it's kind of like hitting the special ed kid right in the head mm. um, and causing further injury. Uh, so that's fun. Okay. So, of course, it was not expressed this way in detail on the show. Oh, it was kind of, in my opinion, it was kind of like glazed over. And I'll be honest with you, Brittany, I'm an upfront bitch. I'm honest and all my hoes is honest. From me watching the show, it was like, well, I and I think it's common. It was like, okay, well, she just remembered those lines from the episode before. But is it because that she's not performing at the level that she's used to, that she's using a crutch of her, of her, of her short-term memory loss that we've never heard before, which isn't your mm -hmm. fault. That is show you know show editing yeah. order and all that stuff what is your response to the people who say that my response is again short-term memory works different and we were using cue cards on the latter challenge whereas the former challenge we had two hours with the script um which gives you the time to commit it to long-term memory you're not using short-term recall and so just to make sure that i understand your your long-term memory is intact it's your short-term mm -hmm. working memory that you yes. struggle with yes okay. which is an issue for people with adhd as well as then me having that injury i mean i have a which side is it on i think it's on this side i have a bald spot down mm -hmm. the side of my head somewhere over here okay there's a big chunk missing so i've never i've never experienced what you experienced but I went to Morehouse College here in Atlanta for music school. Mm -hmm. And in the last semester of my um, program, I was a music major with the emphasis in the voice and conducting, both instrumental and um, voice ensembles, right? Mm -hmm. But I also had to do an ensemble, not an ensemble, a recital, and I had to do a, a piano proficiency exam that I kind of like bullshitted throughout the four years. Mm -hmm. I crammed so much information in my brain. I don't know what it's called, but I do know ever since then, my short-term memory sucks ass. It's horrible. <laughs> and it gives me anxiety because, and even like when I'm doing my um, my green screens for the show, if David St. John is watching, comment down. He'll say something to me and 10 seconds later, I'll be like, can you say the, can you say the top thing again? Like my short-term memory sucks. Mm -hmm. Like I don't remember shit. I just, I just don't. So I can I can relate to you in that regard. Um, what were your responses when you saw the girls talk about your condi your condition? Miss Dion had a lot to say about what she believed was going on with you and your short term memory loss and your performance in the competition. When you saw that, what did you say? Um, I mean, we didn't see a lot of it during the show. Mm -hmm. Of course. Um, Afterward, I pretty much said what I just said to you that mm -hmm. it, they obviously don't understand the difference between memory mm -hmm. and working memory or your short-term memory. Okay. Okay. Barbara Starball is asking, is there more to the go see post freak out that we don't know about Brittany? Um, honestly, I think I was exhausted. I was under a lot of stress and I over freaked out. I was a 21 year old kid in a high stress situation and on, I now could not tell you whether or not I asked the cab driver. I thought I did to meet me there, but it's with my memory, there's a good chance that maybe I just thought I did. Um, there's also ADHD again, um, which I was diagnosed with after the show. Uh, emotional reactivity mm -hmm. is one of the um, issues with that. So right. being highly sensitive and over responsive to emotional stimulus and not being able to calm yourself down immediately. Mm -hmm. um, now I take medication for it, so I'm much more level-headed and even keeled and I'm aware of it, so I'm able to process it differently. Mm -hmm. Do you remember what 
was causing you to have like this build, of course, the stress and all that. But was it you going there and them telling you you were disqualified that kind of like just yeah, took I it think over? Yeah, I think at that point I knew I was eliminated, kind of, and I just sort of was pissed and upset and reactive. <laughs> mm -hmm. Is there anything that you remember that happened that we did not see that you would like to share with us now? Like watching that y'all, y'all didn't see that, but this is what was actually going on. No, I mean, I remember being very awkward on my go sees and very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. um, also, just in general, because cell phones did exist then, even though it was like 10 years ago. If we had had a cell phone, that would have been so much easier because we could have called the cab driver or like dialed a lift. But, you know. Hey, girl, come over here to Cooper Street. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. you know, <laughs> they don't want to give us things that would happen in real life mm -hmm. if you were on go sees, where you could be like, hey, pick me up here. No, they want to create a stressful environment because they want better TV. You know what? Brittany, you are freaking amazing because you're giving me so many little leeway to my next question. A bunch of people were asking, ask Brittany about ghosties and how real they actually are. I mean, A, ghosties are not like that ever when you go. Okay. When you, when you go to ghosties, there's like a bunch of casting people sitting in a room and you walk in for two seconds and you walk out and they look at your thing and flip through your book and that's about it. They might ask you to walk, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, I think the weirdest ghost I ever went on after the show was when I casted for um, Mark Jacobs. He is the one person that does not have a casting director sit in and sits through all of the girls, but he makes the girls walk barefoot and in a skirt, which I thought was very strange. Really? Reason being? Yeah. I don't know what his reason is, but we had to walk barefoot and in a skirt for that casting. And it was very strange to me because when you practice walking for the runway, you walk in heels. And I was like, I don't like this at all. But you did book it. No, I didn't book it. Oh shit. That's okay though. You were in the room, other girls were not. It's okay. I booked a ton of other shows that season, so. Now listen. I think I know the answer, but for the kitties out there watching, I've never asked this um, answer before, but the ghosties on the show that we see are actually staged for the show. They're actually not real life ghosties. Yeah, okay. they're definitely not real life ghosties. They're people that they set us up with. Actually, so funny story. And if I were giving away top model trade secrets, you know, I could be sued for a million dollars. However, this is something that's related to like, I don't know if it's the same for the United States version, but this was, me, um, I forget which country it was, but there was a uh, shoe designer that I had worked with in Italy mm -hmm. that they had been on, they were from LA, but they had been on another country's top model as one of the people. And he told me that they were told who won the challenge prior to it. Like before he even saw the girls? Mm-hmm. Oh. Now, I don't know if that's the case for the way that they do things with ours. Um, I mean, girl, I mean, Brittany, you're a long time ago, but okay. But, like, I mean, listen, we've heard some crazy things over here at ANT and took some, so we've heard some crazy, crazy, crazy things, but okay. I mean, this only adds to our, um, our book guys of the things of the things. Wowzers. Okay, so do you think that applied to your go see challenge in cycle eight where there was a little bit of outside meddling into the results? I think it might have. I think it might have come along with every single challenge. Cause I mean, I don't think there's any way that I should have run the runway challenge. I was a mess on that runway. Um, I don't know how I won. Mm -hmm. Even the few clips they show of me walking are awful. But you think you won because? I think I won because they had it set so that I would win. Okay. Okay. Because I think they need to have certain people hit certain things because they have it pre-scripted of where they want us. In my opinion. And you have, in your opinion, it's not wrong and it's not right. It's your opinion. And we are, <laughs> yes. Oh. <laughs> okay. 
Um, so Clover's Corbin wants to know, is, is, is there anything else in hindsight that you, before I go into the next question, you being like one of the iconic girls from Top Model to have this viral explosive moment that people still talk about to this day, they use to this day, is you being the author of that moment. Is there anything that you want to say in 2020 looking back on that moment? Um, I'd say maybe I should have kept it together a little bit better, but uh -huh. you know, at the end of the day, I can laugh at myself and be like, hey, you know what? Everybody has a moment in their life. It's just usually not televised. <laughs> that is a quote that is worthy of a t-shirt. Yes. <laughs> so Clover's quote wants to know, I think she had one of the strongest looks in portfolios. Were any of her pictures usable outside of the show? Her personal fave were the swimsuit pics from Australia. Um, because of distancing myself from the show um, and from reality television for actual modeling, because designers don't want a reality TV star, they want a clothes hanger where their clothes take center stage. Um, no. Uh, I did great photos afterward, though. I had a strong book. I actually, um, when I signed with New York Models, I was supposed to wait till after Fashion Week, and they got my test shoot back, and the uh, my casting booker called me and he's like, so I got your photos back and I almost crapped myself. But I was like, they're bad. And he was like, no, do you want to go to Italy? <laughs> and I was like, okay, cool. Yes, please. Shout out to you, Brittany. Yes, ma'am. So <laughs> you couldn't use any of those photos from Top Model? No. Dang it. Dang it, dang it, dang it. Um, a lot of questions about your elimination with you being one of the strongest girls on cycle eight. And of course, we know you were eliminated in the top five. What do you believe contributed to the reasons why you were eliminated at that point, being a strong competitor? Um, like I said, I think they have their formula or who's going to win personality wise. Mm -hmm. um, I think that I was the standard middle road strong photos. They don't put too much of the personality on the first few shows and then they kind of spin it to make you a little bit more dislikable and then cut her. You know, I can't lie and say that I don't agree with you because I do believe there is, I've noticed there's always like this weird girl mm -hmm. who's like kills it in the beginning. And then once they go overseas, it's like, she just unravels. We saw it with Heather in Cycle 9. I'm not saying this is fact. This is just me just talking about it and mm -hmm. giving my opinion. We saw it with he Heather in Cycle 9. We saw it with you in, um... In cycle eight, we saw it with Lisa Jackson in cycle nine. There's a bunch of girls I can just spew about. Like they killed it. Um, you can even say Lisa, even though we know the reasons why she got eliminated. Lisa from cycle mm -hmm. five, she was a weird girl, like you know, a problematic whatever real girl who was killing mm -hmm. them again, and then all of a sudden they just lose it and then they go home. So mm -hmm. I, can I think see that was formula. That. Okay. Um, Matthias too wants to know. Did Natasha really seem ganged up on when you guys got to Australia? So the heat left Renee in the beginning, and it seemed like towards the end, everyone was at Natasha. What is your perspective on this? I don't think anybody was more at anyone at any point than they were at other times. I think it's all just editing. Um, I think they sort of like tried to create tension and create moments. Um, like the first night that we moved into the house, for example, there were 13 girls and 12 bets. Mm -hmm. They're just trying to create drama. And then when they don't have it, they edit it in. They'll use anything. And you've got a ton of girls living in a house in a high competition thing. Everybody's going to be at each other to some degree. Mm -hmm. um, and I think they just cut it that way. What other moments watching the show that made you say... Y'all edited that really nicely. Um, well, there was one time that um, they actually edited together us fighting when we weren't, they were, we were fake fighting with each other. Uh, we got really bored in the house as we don't have phones. We didn't have any access to TV, anything like that. So we decided to play hide and seek with the camera crew. So we thought that that would be super fun. So <laughs> 
I was hiding behind the bed and I, one of the guys is like on his thing with the people downstairs in production. And he's like, I don't know what they're doing. Do you want us to entertain them? They're like talking in some weird language. Half the girls are missing. We don't really know what's going <laughs> on. They're staging these fights. And then we go and watch the show and half these fights are staged as like real fights. And we were like that. We were, what? <laughs> that wasn't a real fight. We were messing around. Do trying to distract the camera people. Do you remember any specific fights, like one where it was like, that wasn't a real fight, we were playing. Oh, I would have to watch it again, but there's definitely like an episode where there's multiple fights where like, we're like, no, that that was when we were distracting the camera crew because we were playing hide and seek. Guys, it was hide and seek. <laughs> it was hide and seek, guys. I think it was JL's idea too. JL, JL. Oh, this is, thank you for that story. That puts a smile on my face. And just, and you know, now that I've talked to, guys, I don't know, is it like over 60 people I've talked to, like different people from Top Model? It's like, I can't watch Top Model the same anymore because as I'm watching it, I'm hearing all the different girls and their stories and they're telling me all this behind the scenes tea and it's like, I'm watching, I'm imagining it happen as I'm watching it. So thank you for that. I'm going to look out when I binge watch Cycle 8 again for... Fake fights. I'm going to DM you. I'm like, Brittany, was this a real fight or was this a fake fight? <sighs> yeah. I mean, eventually they should probably release like a spoiler reel of just like, this is what actually happened in the house. Oh, no. I doubt they would ever do that in life. Oh, they was, won't, but they should. <laughs> the empire would come crashing down, girl. I mean, it's already feeble, but it would be destroyed at that point. <laughs> Are there any other moments you like to share with us where you watch a show and you was like, that's not how it happened? Um, I'm trying to think. I think there are a few moments where like, like I said before, somebody's head was turned or something and you're like, that wasn't said then. Like mm -hmm. that was not even in relation to that. Um, it's weird to me that they don't show like the positive things because obviously they want to show the drama. Like the, when course. there were these 12 beds and 13 girls, like I was like, well, it's fine. I'll just sleep out here on the couch. And then JL was like, well, I'll sleep out here too. And then like Samantha was like, yeah, well, I'll just sleep out here. And they were like, well, why are you guys people pleasers? Mm -hmm. Cause wait, what? We're not, we're not allowed to do that, what? <laughs> you know, it's a reality TV show and they want to see the, the Olympic. Oh yes, drama, <laughs> drama is ratings, it's viewers. It, it keeps the lights on. I mean, which? If you understand the nature of the beast, it's not really a bad thing. If you understand yeah. what it gives, you know, you know how to approach it a little bit better. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, how were your experiences in Australia? Um, they were fun. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, I think the, um, uh, photo shoot, I remember the photo shoot we did with the, um, other model, the one that I got eliminated during when the, uh, one that was the better of the two. I remember Jay saying to me, like, I was like, I'm super uncomfortable. And he's like, just look at him like you want to sleep with him. And I was like, oh, you made this so much better. That's not at all uncomfortable. Well, wow, like somebody's laying on top of me. I just read an article today that someone linked in the comment section where you did it with, I don't know if it was reality TV check. I can't remember. I don't want to quote it wrong. But you were saying like how at the time it felt weird to you because you felt like that part of you was supposed to be exclusive for your boyfriend. Yeah, it was very strange. Um, I guess I kind of like have overcome that with other shoots and whatnot. And it's sort of like now whatever, but it was weird. Mm -hmm. We also had eaten a lot of garlic beforehand, which was gross. Garlic? Yeah, like he had really garlic breath. The guy had garlic breath. Yeah. Oh, he should be flogged for that. Um Ooh. yeah. And he um, was close on y'all in his salt water and the octopus and starfish and mm -hmm. oh. that I'm sorry, Brittany. I'm gonna apologize for him. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, so American Shade with Brittany King wants to know, you kind of touched on this, but I want to ask one last time. What were some of the most dramatic incidents that occurred that were not aired? Um, let's see, that were not aired. Mm -hmm. um, I, all right, so this would have been after filming. Um, once you're kicked off, 
you're sequestered because if they were to send us home right away, it would be obvious about who won. So you stay in a hotel room and you're taken out by a babysitter. And me and JL snuck out two nights in a row. Of course. And um, so the next day we have production come and knock on our door. They're like, where'd your girls go last night? And we're like, nowhere. Like, oh, like, nowhere. And they're like, who's in the bathroom? We're like, no one. So we had met these two kids J that JL met on the street and walked up to them. And she go, they said to her, um, they go, where do we get guy to straight guy go to have fun? And she's like, we're looking for the fun too. You come with us. And we ended up like going back and painting at our hotel room. And the one kid left for work. The other kid hid in the bathroom <laughs> and production just goes in there. They open the shower door and they're like, who are you? And he's like, a friend. <laughs> like, you need to go. <laughs> And then we got sent home and they sent two other girls out that had been eliminated to take our place as the eliminated girls in the mix to make sure that nobody else sees or can like tell who's still in Australia that hasn't, hasn't been eliminated yet. Wait, I just, because it, it kind of broke up. I want to make sure I heard you right. So after you girls got busted and in trouble, clarify for me, you girls got sent home? We got sent home from being sent from being sent home. So we got <laughs> sent home <laughs> for real. And we're not allowed to walk in like the final runway show, which all the girls still do because they don't, they don't want the people watching to be able to tell who wins. And they flew two other girls out that had been eliminated to take our place to walk. Cause y'all was being bad children. Yep. We got in trouble. Do you remember who they flew in to replace you guys? I have no idea. <laughs> oh, y'all, we got to get our cycle A chats in because this cycle A. Oh, we were a mess. They told us we were the only what people to ever have two girls sneak out in a row, or and two nights in a row. And I appreciate really? because y'all were bored. We were. We were so bored. And I keep telling the people like you have to put it in the context. This is months without. I, I, I'm just putting the context with me. This is months without fried food. This is months without liquor. This is months without. Oh, no, we had liquor. Okay, liquor, liquor. But this is months without, like, affection. Mm -hmm. And uh, happy Valentine's Day. You know what I'm just saying? Like, I can only imagine being mm -hmm. around a bunch of things that I don't even indulge with. And I can't express myself in the ways and manners I'm used to. It's frustrating. Of course you, you want to get bored. crazy. You get super bored. I also think we all developed like crushes on random camera crew people and we would sit there and like tease them through our microphones and be like, I think camera guy number three is really cute. <laughs> and we'd be like, ice, there's a wall, stop it. So, you know, I've heard of stories where there was a little, um, what I used to say in, um, in summer camp, purple. Have you heard that term before, purple? I haven't. Okay, so like in summer camp, I'm a summer camp kid. I've gone to so many different summer camps, leadership, whatever, whatever. But they'll give like a group of men, like a, the, the boy group, a certain color, and they'll give the girl group a certain color. And and the counselors will be like, no purpling, no purpling. That's basically when you mix the, co the colors <laughs> together and stuff like that. Was there any incidents of purpling with no, the girls and the people? Okay. I just had to ask. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm here to do the Lord's work of the people. I just had to ask. I mean, they had eyes everywhere. I think we would have gotten in, like, mega trouble. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, Shy town wants to know, this is from YouTube, what are your thoughts on how you were edited? I feel like they gave her the crybaby image. Also, what did she think when she saw, um, don't worry about that part. How do you feel about how they edited you on the show and you being this whiner? Um, I think it was a little unfair, but I think I, you know, I signed up for whatever. <laughs> you sign your life away. So it is what it is. Um, I just say take it with a grain of salt. Mm -hmm. I don't cry that much in real life. Most of the time. Right, right, right. Um, I'm curious to know your opinions on the judges the people who sat on the panel for your cycle, we have, I'll just do it one by one, of course, Nigel Barker, notable fashion photographer, Nigel Barker. Thoughts on Nigel? He was silly. There was this running thing where I guess, like, he thought I was cute or something, so there were always jokes made whenever I would come up and everyone would be like, ooh, Nigel. And it was, like, this goofy thing. Like, when I did the um, 
banana split photo shoot, I had had uh, bananas initially, which they thought looked really phallic <laughs> then, and they edited them okay. out. Um, and I had said something about it, and I had said they'd given me a cherry first. And he was like, oh, so you lost your cherry on the shoot. <laughs> and I was just like, okay then. <laughs> okay. Oh, <laughs> uh, what about Miss J Alexander? Um, mm, very much a character. Of course. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A lot of personality. Yes. Um, Twiggy, Twiglet. Twiggy was the sweetest. She was just always like she always followed everything with something positive. She was just. Um, I think she had a lot more sympathy for us than maybe the other judges. And then last but not least, the mother herself, Tyra Lynn Banks. Um, I don't really know, honestly. We never saw her unless cameras were rolling and I think it was all her character. Okay. I mean, she spent casting days in her double-decker bus that's bigger than most people's apartments and you know, when Tyra showed up, hey guys, act excited, Tyra's here, fake it to make it. So. Did you have any experiences with Tyra outside of filming? Nope. So your interactions with Tyra are enclosed in Cycle 8. You didn't see her at any time after you finished filming for Top Model Cycle 8. Nope, we barely saw her on set. Yikesers. What are your thoughts on like what the people say about her nowadays? Because the people don't let Tyra Banks rest. They say a lot, and I mean, granted, everyone's entitled to their opinion and how they want to express their experiences, but there have been a lot of strong opinions made about her and how she treated the girls. If you've seen any, what are your opinions on them? Um, I haven't seen any. I would say that, I mean, she's there as a host of a show. It's, mm -hmm. It is what it is. She's there to do a job. I don't think that she she's basically acting as like a producer and a central person that's just a character on a show. It's a job for her. And at the end of the day, that's all it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, some fun questions here. What is your favorite photo shoot? And what's your least favorite one? Um, my least favorite one was the one where I was the valedictorian. Really? Boy, I hated that picture. Okay, why? I don't know, I just don't like the picture. I okay. think I look goofy in it. Um, my favorite one was probably either the dead one or the banana split one. You see which one I use for your promo graphic? That banana split one is yes. so, it's, it's still- I left edible. out with that one because I have um, Renaud syndrome, which means that my hands um, get really cold and react to stress and temperature differently. Uh, so I couldn't hold the ice cream, so they gave me fake ice cream, uh -huh. which sort of gave me an advantage over the other girls, but I would have gotten, I mean, Cassandra did get frostbite, but I would have, like, I can't hold a cold sand, uh, cold can of soda for more than, like, two seconds. I have to set it down at the store while I'm buying it because my hands start to hurt. Wowzers. Wowzers. That, I mean, at least you got a good photo out of the, the Yeah, photo. right? Yeah, I mean, that photo is amazing. It's amazing. Like I said, I use it for the, because the eyes, the hair, the color, the shape of it, it's, it's amazing. Um, I'm curious to know, all of us are curious to know, what was your post top model career like? Like, you're done with top model and you're out there in the real world. Tell us about um, it. It was pretty good. I modeled, like I said, um, I was with New York Model Management in New York, um, and then I was with Beatrice in Milan and cover model management in um, Paris. I did quite a bit, um, both runway and print. I worked really well in Paris. Uh, mm -hmm. And then I had moved back to New York and I, um, a friend of mine, I found him after a suicide. So I had left New York for a little bit um, and I had gone to LA and then New Orleans and then I was in Chicago for about a year and then my dad got sick. Um, and I moved down to Georgia to take care of him until he passed. And then I had my daughter. So that's not really conducive to a modeling lifestyle. You're still in Georgia? Uh, I'm in Florida right now, but I'm up on St. Simons like every week. You live in Florida? Yes. 
What part? What part? I'm in Jacksonville. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I'm originally from Fort Lauderdale. Really? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So now you're in Georgia and I'm in Florida. Yes, right. We swapped. We swapped. What part of um, Georgia were you in? Uh, St. Simons. Where is that? St. Simons Island. It's about an hour north of here, about an hour below Savannah. Um, Gotcha. It's on the other side. mm Mm-hmm. Okay. If you have any friends, like female friends that like clothing, my daughter's aunt owns a shop there that they sell nationally called Shop Hopes. And they do a $5 sale like twice a year where they get rid of all their inventory and there are lines around the block. Really? You guys hear that out there? Tell them one more time, Brad. Shop Hopes. And they do a $5 sale like twice a year mm-hmm. on St. Simon's Island where her store is. You can also go to Shop Hopes on Instagram and see what they have. But to get rid of all their inventory, they do this $5 sale and there are lines around the block for it. And it's you can get the best fashion from them for like nothing mm-hmm. when they do their sales. You heard it here first, so make sure you go get it, guys. And tell me, and tag, tag me and Britt when you go over there down to St. Simon's, okay? People come all the way from Atlanta for it. Really? Yeah. Oh. They drive the four hours for the sale. I'm going to go check. I'm going to go check it out and see what the people are doing. Why why the people are throwing their lives away? I won't say throwing throwing their lives away, but (laughs) driving four hours, that's a long time to go get some clothes. Hey. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so what are you doing nowadays, Britt? Um, now I um, I own two different companies. I have a publishing company that does independent uh, children's literature. Um, so I've written my own book, uh, and I've put out one other one so far. Yes, come show us. So um, I released top. this book which is an alphabet book for little girls that gives an adjective and a definition for every letter that does outside of, um, outside of physical appearance. Can, can, can we see some of the words? Uh-huh. So we have knowledgeable, funny. And you said these are adjectives outside of the physical appearance. Yes. And what is the aim of the book? So it's to um, sort of empower little girls and to teach us to use adjectives that aren't focused on beauty because when it comes to little girls that often we uh, tend to focus on physical attributes. Oh, you're so cute. And oh, you have such like, Mm -hmm. that's such a sweet dress and this, that, and the other thing. Whereas little boys were like, oh, you're so tough and you're so strong. Mm -hmm. So this is sort of to remind us to um, pay attention to those attributes in little girls um, and highlight them. Um, And then I uh, last year put out this book for another author, um, which it's actually really interesting. They're uh, poems to put kids in touch with death and with elderly issues and also their grandparents' histories. They're beautifully written. Um, we have a few more books coming out this year. The publishing company is called Little Chicklet Books. And then I also, on top of that, um, realized how many authors want to self-publish. So I started a branch of our of that company um, with my friend Ed Steinberg in New York. He did Madonna's first music video. Um, and he is the owner of, um, or the president of Rock Media. Um, So he's worked a lot in music, but he's also done some children's projects. So I contacted him about um, my company into a book, which does graphic design services, editing and marketing for, and then publishing assistance for self-publishing authors. Um, And he decided to partner with me on it. So congrats. Thank you. And right now I'm building a um, alphabet book that encompasses representation. Um, for an author, Ty Salvent in New Orleans. And um, I just finished a book, Haven, the House That Got Homesick, for an author in Cummings, Georgia. I know Cummings, Georgia. That is so, what made you get into this field? Um, well, I've always written. Okay. And when I had a daughter, it just seemed to make sense. That is dope as heck, Brittany. Well, and then children's- you- Children's literature is, you know, it, they're our future and we can either teach them the, the aim of my publishing company, um, not the self-publishing part, but the other one is to 
publish books that have a social impact mm -hmm. um, because rather than try to correct adults to be more open-minded and caring and better people, if we just instill in children to be more accepting and open-minded mm -hmm. and loving, then we're halfway through the battle. Yes, ma'am, I concur. And if someone wants to like work with you, how can they do it? Um, they can contact me at 213authors is mm -hmm. actually our phone number. Mm -hmm. There's also intoabook.com um, mm -hmm. or my Facebook or Instagram. Um, and that's how you would reach us for one of those projects. Gotcha. Um, and I heard you say you have two businesses. Did you already mention the second one? Um, yeah, so there's Into a Book is okay. the second one that does the self-published authors. Okay, and then gotcha. the other one is my independent publishing company where we publish books for other people and that's more of a traditional publishing house. Gotcha, okay, okay, gotcha, 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 gotcha. All right, thank you for um, explaining that for me so no one's confused. Brittany, you have done an amazing freaking job at this. Like, this is freaking amazing. Guys out there, don't you freaking agree? Give her some emojis and all the things, because you did a great chat, and it's so great to see what you're doing. I think that is so important, and it's 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 it should be commended and recognized. Like, that's good stuff that you're doing out here in the community for our children and, and, and teaching them the right thing so they don't become angry adults later on and messing the world up more than what it, it, it already is. And... Mm -hmm. With that being said, what you're doing with JL and her legacy is like so freaking crazy. And like the fact you guys met on Top Model and you guys had a friendship and now you're here doing this for her in her honor, I think is so freaking, I'm honored to talk to you right now. Yeah, it makes me happy to be able to include her in something like this um, with my next book, uh, The Rights to Remember One. That's something that I feel that she would a be a part of and helps also keep her memory alive in a way that is positive and shares a little bit of her with the world. Thank you for that. Now, listen, I don't have any more questions for you, but some of my friends here have a couple of questions for you that I'm going to get through. Guys, don't send no more questions because it's late. We had a couple of issues, and I want you guys to get off because it's Valentine's Day, and y'all need to go snuggle, huggle, buggles with the things of the things. That, um, Brittany, do you have Valentine? I do not. Can, will you be my Valentine? Sure. Yay! That is so great. Okay, I'm gonna ask you one more question. Mm -hmm. My eyes, this whole time, have been, have been looking over here because here's where, like, you know, the system and the server mm -hmm. and the panel. I get so much anxiety when I do these lives on YouTube because it comes with so many different things. So I'm gonna ask you one more question that I ask everybody, and while I'm doing that, I'm gonna get the questions together that our friends are asking you tonight. And then okay. we'll be done. All so right. the question I always ask is, if you were standing before Tyra Lynn Banks in 2021, what would you say to her? Um, maybe consider more about how you affect people's lives when you don't prepare them for the aftermath. Now, listen, I'm curious to know. I've never asked this question, and I wanted to ask Nigel but I didn't have enough time. Do you think that top model is or should be responsible for doing some sort of aftercare with the girls that come through the show? Um, no, not necessarily, but I do think that they could have done more in the way of uh, general guidance. I think they could build their brand better if they did that um, nice. because they would have more success for more girls. Um, but they're not obligated to. They're not obligated to. They're not. It would be nice human actions to do so, but I think they're not obligated to. Yeah. Um, what? So shout out to David St. John. David St. John is the executive producer of this show that I'm on right now. Um, which is the T.S. Madison Experience. Again, I'm going to keep pubbing it because I'm so excited. The T.S. Madison Experience had its debuting on VTV on March 4th at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It is about um, T.S. Madison, who was a social media maven and LGBTQ icon. She's transgender, a transgender woman of color. And it's about her life um, as she goes through the industry, as she goes through her own family struggles. And it also highlights her found family, um, which doubles as her creative team, which includes me. But anyways, I say all that to say, 
David St. John, who's our executive producer, used to um, work on the show. And he tells me, he said, Oliver, you have all these girls coming here and talk bad about that show and do all this. And they do all and they do all that. You need to ask them, what is at least one thing? And if you have more than one, tell us, what is at least one thing you can share good that you take away from your time on Top Model? Um, I think it did open a lot of doors for me. I think it made me more confident. Mm -hmm. um, okay. General, and it gave me some really good friends. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. That, I am so happy I did this with you. Like, I'm, I think we're all happy. Like, I didn't expect this. Thank you. Just thank, thank you. Like, you. I'm really lost for words. Like, JL was one of my favorite people. I've said this before. She was one of my favorite people on the show. And I'm a top model fanatic. So I stayed up to, you know, stayed up with all the girls and what they were doing. And it was hurtful to see her go through that. But it was also um, amazing to see that she recovered and she was living a regular life and, you know, all the things. And unfortunately, you know. Not just a regular life, life, but she was helping people. And see, those are the things that we don't know about because, of course, you know, JL wasn't a big, 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 big celebrity, so they're not yeah. going to be documenting everything. The people aren't going to pay attention to the most salacious things. So to have you come on here and add that to her story, and now this is immortalized forever on the internet, I think is so amazing. Like, I think it's the most prettiest bow to put on the JL story that I didn't think I was going to get tonight, but, like, I'm grateful that you did, because it's beautiful. She's, she was a beautiful person. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's pretty much anybody like her in the whole world. Shout out to JL Girl. You're still inspiring people to this day, mamas. Mwah. Yes, ma'am. Happy Valentine's Day. I'm going to get into these questions, Britt, and I'm going to get you out of here. I don't want no more tears. because you, You've done an amazing job. This is like one of my... I hate saying it, but this is... Uh-oh, uh wait. Where did she go? Tyra, leave us alone. Is she back? Did someone call her? And here my computer is doing the oopsie hoopsie poopsies. Is she back, guys? No, did she leave? No, what happened? I'm sorry, I'm looking, guys. As soon as we we're about to get into the questions, it happens. But listen, if she doesn't come back, maybe she got a phone call and she's trying to join back in. Let me take her off remove and let's see if she comes back listen guys um we've been dealing with technical difficulties all night but listen i think it was worth the wait i think Brittany has definitely blessed us with an amazing and freaking amazing oh she's back i'm gonna add her back computer day i'm back on my phone you're back i'm back i'm so sorry my okay. computer died i wasn't paying attention to the uh okay, battery listen, so i'm gonna get you off since we've been on um, here we go. Here we go. I'm looking, guys. I'm looking. This is why I like it on YouTube. I mean, Instagram. Okay. So, Jewel Mir is asking, for everyone just getting here, 50 Cent asked Brittany if the carpets match the drapes regarding her red hair. What the F? That is funny. Shout out to you. Um, anything you want to add to that again? I mean, you got to. No, I think I was just a little taken off guard. <laughs> I would have been. Now that's what 50 Sun asked me. Our Bracken is like, hi, Brittany. I thought you were one of the best models on your season. What was your modeling experience like before the show? Um, So I had never modeled before the show. I was signed mm -hmm. to Elite when I was 14 um, and never followed through with it. And I told my mother at the time that I wanted nothing to do with an industry so vain. Um, 14-year-old versus 21-year-old when somebody says they'll pay you to take your picture. <laughs> Everybody was signed to elite model management back in the day. I can't. Right? Guys, how many people have I've chatted with and they said they were signed to elite model management when they were little girls? What was, uh, did elite have like a big division for like young girl talent? Um, They, I mean, they have a pretty large division in general. Mm -hmm. Um, They're one of the larger agencies. Um, I don't know nothing about it. New York, I picked New York because they're one of the top agencies that is uh, still a boutique agency. So they have less girls. Um, and they're more centralized, mm -hmm. but elite is an entity. <laughs> gotcha. The head honchos. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe Anthony is asking, Hey Britt, 
when you first met the panel and Tyra asked if you had ever, if you had ever had your hearing checked and you said, pardon, was that the edit? That is good. I forgot about no, that. No, I literally didn't hear them. <laughs> I honestly didn't hear her. Uh-huh. We were in a really big open room though. It's just, it just so happened to be like perfectly placed. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, guys, I'm refreshing the page. I'm looking on the back, back end on YouTube. Just make sure I don't miss any by these questions because I don't want no one wringing my neck because they will get me, Brittany. They will get me. They will get me. They will get me. Well, then I'll have to come me. get them. Tell them, Britt. <laughs> Tell them, Britt. Tell them you See? will take them back to Priscilla's in a second. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, so I got maybe Anthony. I got Albert Bracken. I got Jewel. And I got... Uh, nope, that's another one. Okay, I got everybody. Listen, don't All say right. any more questions, guys. Thank you guys so much. Brittany, is there anything else you want to include on this chat? I don't want to let you go because I feel like we're having such an amazing talk. And there were like over 800 people watching. Everyone's enjoying us. I don't want to let you go, but of course I got to. Is there anything you want to add before uh, we say goodbye to you tonight? Just everybody say stay safe and, you know, hang in there through COVID and treat everybody with kindness and respect. And guys, if you're just watching, make sure you rewatch so you can get all of the call to actions that Brittany gave us in regards to her company, what she's doing with literature, what she's doing for children, the project she's working on that's honoring the legacy of her castmate, JL. Brittany said a lot of beautiful things, a lot of shady things, a lot of funny things, a lot of shocking things, a lot of informative things. This is one of the best chats we have had, guys, in a long time. And I'm so grateful that you did it for me. I'm grateful that you had me on. Thank you. No, you're so freaking welcome. Again, thank you so much. Blessings to you. I'm going to make sure I share all these things as they're coming out because I want to support you in any way that I can. And um, be safe out there. And thank you again. You as well. Bye. Everyone say bye to Brent. Bye. Listen, guys. Happy Valentine's Day. I freaking love you guys. And I hope you love me back. Say you. Say that you love me, Steve, my name, say that you need. Listen, I hope you guys had a wonderful Valentine's Day. Thank you so much for spending time with me and my special guest, Brittany from Cycle 8 of America's Next Top Model, where we just talked about the things of the things. My name is Oliver Twix. Yes, I am the head nerd in charge, the nerd boy cutie reporting for duty. And tonight, this little bitch did the Lord's work once again be sure to like comment subscribe and share this video go catch my other antium to exclusive videos i have done we have like over 60 on the books so when you're bored on your day at work or in the car Go to Autumn Twix YouTube channel, this one right here, and start putting the ANTM chats and get us to the things of the things that the girls are not holding back. They are not holding back. And we are so grateful and honored to be the curators for these conversations. I ain't got no more, y'all. I love y'all. Thank you so much for your support. Be safe out there. And until next time, be sure to pray in mother-loving Kegel. Kegel, bitch! Bye.